well, this is it. This is pretty much the last step. Uh, this is the last step that there's going to be a video for, and I'm going to detail here the presentation. Now, there's a few clear, a few things of which uh, there needs to be some clarity. The presentation is something that the American School of Tegucigalpa and many other IB schools around the world do. Um, it's kind of like an opportunity where students can showcase their knowledge and receive feedback on their work. Uh, from people other than their supervisor. So it's a really strong idea. However, it is not like officially part of the extended essay uh, program as designed by IB. So really the attitude that students kind of have towards this should not be one of stress or um, anxiety. It's more of, you know, here's all this work I did and now some other people are going to get to hear it and give me feedback. This is really important because so much work is done in school and students don't receive any feedback on it and then they kind of feel like their work is meaningless. So the idea of sharing one's work with other people uh, not only allows that work to be better because you will receive feedback on your work from other people, but also it adds some type of like value to the work that you do because you know that this is a mountain of work that you're doing and you're not just sharing it with your supervisor who of course is going to read your rough draft and give you all types of comments but you also get an opportunity to share it with other people so this is really cool um so here we start on the extended essay page again at uh, the ib program at ast and there's a link over here information on the extended essay presentations if you click on that it takes you to this uh, series of tables here and most of what I'm going to talk about today is uh, the guidelines. Uh, this kind of single one-page handout really describes most of what students are expected to do for the presentation. And I've also got some sample handouts back on the site that I'm going to go back to in just a little bit. So at AST we have these presentations in the multi-purpose room for the students that are uh, seniors in 2016. These will take place in October. And students are, you know, it's right after school, latest it'll go as 4 o'clock, usually it's possible to wrap up by like 3.30. And uh, I will have a laptop available there. So many students choose to either design like a Pressy or a PowerPoint or some other type of like visual aids that they believe the audience will better understand their presentation through. Speaking of the audience, uh, the coordinator myself, uh, Blake Swanson, will be at all of the presentations. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there will be a panel of judges, which are supervisors. And in addition to that, there could be other diploma seniors. Uh, and def definitely juniors are required to go to a few of these presentations. If presenters want to invite other people, such as their parents or friends, uh, that's absolutely okay. I mean, really, this should be something that students should feel excited about. They should be excited about the opportunity to share their work. Um, this is something where... You know, conceivably, as described in the guide, the extended essay guide, it could take 40 hours of work. So students should be excited about owning their topic. They should not feel that they don't know something because, for a fact, if you made it this far in the process, you know a lot. So kind of details here, the main focus points of the presentation. It'll be 10 to 15 minutes, which seems seems kind of long, but actually it's not, especially if you're considering that you're really sharing your 4,000 words. I mean, you're not going to read it, but you're, you're sharing equivalent of 4,000 words of knowledge. I mean, it's very extensive. Um, there's going to be attention to the question, the subject-specific expectations, the findings, and the conclusion that's reached. And, you know, like I said before, there's going to be a panel of a few judges. Students should make a handout, which is preferably a single page, but I've also got uh, a handout that's multiple pages, um, which, you know, really either, either way works. And um, I will use a series of cards to kind of indicate, you know, how time is going because uh, it's easy to lose track of time when you really get into something that you know a lot about. So as teachers, they're, they're professionals at that, of just rambling on and on. So I, I will show a yellow card if there's five minutes left and then a red card when there's one minute left, and that'll kind of help keep everything on track. So a good kind of starting point is thinking like, okay, so if I'm going to be presenting for 10 to 15 minutes, how do I break that up? And here is kind of a, a really helpful general outline of how students should think about breaking up their presentation. Uh, 
the first minute, and it might even honestly take longer than a minute, it might even take like two minutes, is explaining the question, exactly what your question is, and what the scope of the question is, meaning like how you're going to answer the question, the research roadmap. Um, this is very important. It is a lot of students, when they make presentation material, it goes on a separate slide. On the handout, usually it goes on the top. This is very important because the wording of the question is something that really is important because that sets up the target that students are shooting for. So the first minute or two minutes is just talking about the question and exactly what the scope is. Exactly how you're going to get to the answer. The next kind of period, which could take two or three minutes, the student will explain what subject the essay is in, whether it's history or world studies or psychology or politics or whatever, and they will say why it falls into that subject. They will spend time explaining the what the rubric demands for their subject and they will, you know, they should, like it says here, that they should reference parts of the rubric. And, and the, you, I mean, really, this is where students should show not only that they understand what the rubric is and what it's asking for, but students here should also show that they understand, like, okay, I'm doing really well with this part of the rubric, but I'm really struggling with this other one. Like in history, for example, like maybe the investigation part of the rubric is going really well, like you've got a lot of different sources from many different um, authors, some are primary, some are secondary, um, but maybe, for example, with the analysis, students are struggling. Maybe, like, that's very common in history. Maybe, maybe students will feel like they're just being very descriptive and they're really struggling with those, those higher level thinking skills. So that will, that could, I mean, that could conceivably take five minutes, uh, a third of the time. It's just explaining what your question is and why it is in the subject that you're researching in and what are the strengths and weaknesses that you have with that subject. This is very important because the judges might not be able to give you good feedback if the student presenter cannot really thoroughly explain these things. Beyond that, the re the re left the, the remainder of the time, the time that is left, students will just really go through their evidence. They will say how their evidence helps them get to their answer. They'll really explain why their evidence is credible. They'll make sure that they're touching on multiple perspectives because again, that helps you get to analysis. And they will say the conclusion. So the this is where you really get into like the meat of what you've done and what you found, uh, where you share your findings and you, you share your conclusion. Um, so that's kind of what the presentation looks like in, in terms of you know a student standing there, breaking up the 15 minutes into smaller, more manageable chunks. In addition to that, there is uh, the handout that students have to make. And the handout is really important because verbally, when students are sharing all this information, and in, even in the presentation, like if they're using a press or PowerPoint, they might be going, uh, so fast and be talking about something so detailed the judges and the audience really struggle to give um, feedback. So the handout is a tool that allows the student to receive better feedback on their work by the panel of judges because again there's going to be three teachers that are supervisors um, that will give feedback. So here we've got kind of the different parts that should be in the handout. The exact full research question, a description of why the question falls into the subject, details about what the rubric is expecting, uh, the evidence, you know, the evidence that students collected to make their argument, if they've got relevant graphics or images, and a list of your sources. This one's actually really important because um, a list of the sources helps the judges kind of realize if the sources are credible or not. And down below here, you see kind of what the judge feedback form is going to look like. So each of the judges is going to have a kind of these these boxes on a page, on an 8 by 11 page, uh, with a lot more space. And they're going to write comments, and they're going to kind of give constructive feedback for, for students to make their essay even stronger. So if students are wondering, well, like, what does this look like? You know, what do the handouts look like? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a video of the, the presentation to share, but I will next year. I'm going to put some up. But uh, I do have samples of the handout. And uh, originally, and again, you know, the, again, back here on the extended essay presentation page, the links for the handouts are over here. So you click on the single page handout. Uh, it goes to one from a, a senior of 2015. Uh, she did a wonderful job. And she's got a question clearly here on the top. Uh, this is kind of the importance, the significance of the, the topic. Requirements from her rubric. Evidence comes in. So this is kind of one way that it could look. I feel like this is really well done for one single page 8 by 11. And really the
benefits of doing it on a single page as opposed to like multiple pages is that uh, it's easier to look at by the judges because if you throw too much information, like for example, if you make copies of your entire essay and you give it to the judges, I mean, they're not going to be able to process all that information when you're presenting in just 10 or 15 minutes. I mean, that's just not possible. Uh, when, when students are making their presentation handout, they really need to think about how can I highlight the important pieces of my work and lay them out in a, in a viewer-friendly way for the judges. Uh, going back to the page, there's also a multi-page example. This is also by a student who really did very well. Uh, I've got her name on there, but I don't think she would mind. Uh, I was actually her supervisor too. Uh, so, you know, if there's anything wrong with it, I'm just as guilty. But there's, you know, it's, it's, it, I was really proud with the work that she did. She's got a question here. She's got some clear, you know, this is kind of the roadmap, of the layout to what her question is, is asking. Uh, here's this, you know, how to, does it fit into the subject? Here she's got the rubric and what are the different like criteria that the rubric asks for. And then we start going in with the evidence, focusing on, you know, how she's going to get to the answer. What is the evidence and what are the multiple perspectives? She's got it broken down into a, a new alphanumeric list, very organized. Um, and then at the end of the list, she's got some, some pictures. So, you know, that's kind of what a multi-page, uh, handout could look like and I've asked a lot of judges like what do they prefer multi-page or single page and you know they're pretty flexible so even though it says in the uh, assignment description here it says kind of you know go for a single page uh, it can be multi-page if, if students want so that's kind of it uh, I really think what's important here is that students when they present they feel ownership over their topic and they feel proud about it because they should. I mean, it, they've really done a lot of work. There's been many deadlines by this point. No matter how you feel, you are qualified to go up and talk about this stuff. And it should be a really kind of fulfilling, rewarding intellectual experience where, uh, you know, you get to share your thoughts with other people and hear what they think about your thoughts. So that's kind of it.